Good morning, everybody. It's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, the content executive for Higher Things. And joining me today is Ashley Sheldon. Ashley is a professional mental health worker, and we're so happy to have her here with us for just an important topic. Um, Ashley, we're, we're here because it's, it's Mental Health Awareness Month, right? Yep, absolutely. So um, what does this mean? Yeah, dive in. Yeah. So I, uh, when you ask me what topic we should cover, um, I always have to rack my brain, um, on what we should talk about because I could give many speeches and many talks about many things, but, um, I realized and remembered that May is mental health awareness month. Um, for me, I try to make every month, um, mental health awareness month, but, um, on the books, it's mental health awareness month. So, um, really the biggest thing about that is really, like it says awareness, right? I think that there is, um, is, and has been a lot of stigma regarding mental health, um, mental health support, mental illness, right? All of those kinds of things. And, um, it's often, um, kind of a taboo topic, right? It's kind of uncomfortable to talk about. It's uncomfortable to talk about our feelings. It's uncomfortable to be like, Hey, I'm not doing well right? I'm not doing great. I'm struggling a little bit, right? It's kind of um, more acceptable. You know, when somebody asks you, you don't ever tell them how you really are, right? It's how are you? I'm fine. I'm good. I'm fine. Right. Not like I'm having a really tough day. Can we talk about it? Um, Yeah. The cashier at Walmart doesn't like it when you do that. It's yep. (laughs) Yep. Yeah. And on the other end of it, sometimes people may be like, do that in inappropriate situations and the cashier at Walmart doesn't really need to know about, um, you know, your bird dying and your neighbor not talking to you, right? Like it time and place. Right. But overall, when we're talking about friends and relationships, right. A lot of the times, even with people we're close with, right. It's hard to say like, Hey, no, I'm, I'm actually struggling. I'm not doing well. Um, and so, yeah, the, the awareness month, then just checking in about it is really, um, about, you know, trying to end the stigma, right? Letting people know that it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to ask for help. It's an important thing. Uh, and we talk about, you know, the awareness month. Um, and it's one of those things that I think on, on one side, you have people who just sort of throw their hands up to another thing to be aware of. But on the other, like the people who struggle, they're aware of it every day. It's just desperate to have somebody to talk to. And there are environments where it's it's harder. Um, we, we've talked about this before, but the church has not had a great history of dealing with mental health. For some reason, um, we have sort of conflated spirituality and mental health into the same bucket, and they're not the same thing. And that means that if, well, you have a faith, you're not supposed to struggle, at least if those are one thing. But the reality of the situation is in the same way that you're physical body can suffer, even though you believe that Christ is risen from the dead, you're allowed to struggle too. And so when the church would step in to to deal with this, awareness is actually an important thing in the same way that we don't want to be Gnostics. Like we don't want to just be like hyper spiritual and not worry about the body at all. We we only want to, you know, focus on getting our souls to heaven. We we actually should care for each other down here. We should recognize that Christ took flesh, that, that he actually bled and died to redeem you and me, and that he cares about your body enough to raise it on the last day. So if you're sick, you should go to the doctor and we'll pray for you too, but there's not a stigma in going to the doctor. And in the same way, like you wouldn't pray your cancer away. You go to the doctor and pray when you struggle, you see, see, see a professional and pray. These things go hand in hand and and one actually does support the other, but it's, it's not good. It's just common to struggle. And it's, it's a good thing to sort of break through and sort of say in the same way that I recognize that it's not good to be a sinner, but I am a sinner and Christ redeemed me. It's it's not good to struggle with mental health, but there are places for it. It's not good to struggle with physical health, but there are places to address it. And the reality is there's help. Absolutely. And I think really addressing, you know, the, the reality of it, right. I think a lot of the times we talk about mental health as in, the only context we talk about it is when there's something wrong, right. Or mental illness or somebody's crazy or somebody's, you know, whatever. Um, when in reality, even if there's something, even if there's not something wrong with your physical health, right. You still, uh, you exist on a spectrum of your physical health, right. I'm doing really well today. I'm kind of hurting today. I got an injury, right. It's, it's similar. Um, when we talk about mental health, right. Um, nobody just doesn't have mental health, right. You either are struggling with it things are hard or things are going okay sometimes. Um, and again, like when it talks about, uh, when we talk about physical health and mental health, um, there are differences in our brains, 
right? Not to get to get too sciencey, but it's it's a fact, right? People that struggle with depression, anxiety, trauma, addiction, their brains look different than somebody that doesn't struggle with those things and somebody that doesn't have some of those diagnoses and those symptoms. And so um, it's it's a fact, right? We can't ignore it. We can't pretend it doesn't happen. It's a fact. And so we have to address it. Um, and the less that it's stigmatized and the more that we encourage people that it's okay and it's encouraged and it's, it's a brave thing to do, right? To reach out and sit and talk to somebody about your deepest, darkest secrets and your vulnerabilities, right? That's a really brave and hard thing to do. Um, and I think the more that we encourage people to do it and let people know that it's okay, the more willing people are to start opening up about it. I think it's important to, to recognize, especially when you talk about the idea that mental health exists, exists on a spectrum, that also means that you're allowed to address it before it becomes a crisis. Um, and, and quite frankly, if you address it ahead of time, you, you probably save a lot of struggle, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's where people feel overwhelmed. Um, that's where systems get overwhelmed, right? If, if the only place that people ever get help is in the hospital, right, is in the crisis, is, um, you know, during or after a suicide attempt, um, that's not just like, hey, go to therapy once a month and you're good, right? Like that means we really got to do some, some work on it, right? We got to get some things going. And so I think preventative stuff, right? Like, mental health doesn't always just mean talk therapy, right? It means having good and healthy and supportive relationships with the people in your life. Um, it means having good self-care, right? Doing things that are helpful for your, your body and your mind. Um, and, and like you said, yeah, preventative work, right? Knowing what works for you, knowing what helps you feel good, knowing what helps you do well and knowing what doesn't, right? And, and the things that are harmful to us, physically, mentally, everything, um, and then avoiding those places and people and things, right. And, and just being aware of, of what works for you. Right. And just being really self-aware of what's helpful for you and what isn't. So in the church, uh, we, we talk about sort of your, your daily devotions, your spiritual life, your care that, um, it, it's, it's one thing to sort of call the pastor in a panic because there's an absolute crisis, but there's also something like read a Psalm a day. And it's one of those things where it's, it's hard to do um, like I struggle with it and, and I'm a pastor and I'm surrounded by books to look smarter than I actually am. And it's actually hard in my free time to just pick one up and read it because it's good for my soul. Um, in the same way, um, I, I know that there are, you know, the crisis numbers to call if, if you, you, you feel like you're about to hurt yourself, but how do you check in with your mental health on a daily basis before that sort of crisis mode? What do you do? Yeah. So some of the things that I suggest, um, are having a good routine right? Waking up at the same time every morning, going to bed around the same time every night, having a good morning routine, having a good nighttime routine. Sometimes brushing your teeth is like the simplest thing you can do for your mental health and just like staying on top of stuff. Um, I encourage people to journal. Um, it's, it's a very therapisty thing to, to recommend, but it really is helpful, right? When we feel overwhelmed when we feel stressed, when we feel like everything is going on in my head and I don't know what to do with it, getting it out and putting it down on paper. Um, you can, you can do your phone, you can write something on your computer. I always encourage paper because it's cathartic, right? Writing it down. It literally tells your brain it's okay to get this out. It's okay to have these feelings. It's okay to have these thoughts. I'm putting them down on paper. Um, and you can keep them in a journal, you can rip them up, uh, you can burn them, but only you can prevent forest fires. Uh, so do that safely. But I think getting them out and journaling is one of the, the top things I recommend, right? Is in, in times of, uh, you know, when you're feeling okay and as prevention, but also as really when, in times when you're really struggling, right? I really need to get these feelings out. Um, I really want to make sure that I practice doing that. So those are a couple of things that I encourage people to um, to do and also just check in with your supports, right? It doesn't have to mean calling somebody and venting for three hours about your life. It can be, hey, we're gonna talk for 15 minutes about our favorite show, right? And that is something that's helpful. Uh, we feel connection, we feel like we talked about something we enjoy, right? It can be something as simple as that. So some of these things then, they actually are normal parts of our routine. It's just, they have a thing that we wanna take a, a stigma away from and saying it's the, the routines that you have, the journaling that you do, the, the, the compassion that you, you give and receive, that actually is care for your own, your mental health. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing to be aware of. Yeah. Fair enough. Anything else we kind of wanna hit today? Um, 
I think you hit the nail on the head with the prevention thing, right? Getting ahead of it before it becomes a crisis, right? People don't magically become suicidal one day, right? People don't magically get to the point where they're drinking a liter of alcohol a day, right? People don't get to that point overnight. Um, Check in on your friends, be preventative, um, be proactive about your own self-care, about your own support. Um, There's lots of avenues to get that help. Um, Your your school, your doctor, hopefully your pastor, your church has some resources to point you to as well. Um, But I think just that it's okay to to not be okay. It's okay to need help and support. And um, that that's, like I said, that's encouraged. That's a brave thing to do. And that's what I want to do is reduce that stigma around it. Yeah, I love it. I'm going to leave you with with one request then. Um, When you go to church, um, we as pastors are sometimes we struggle with this. We, we struggle with where to put this. Um, if you are a pastor, pray for mental health sometime this month during the prayers of the church. If you're not a pastor, ask your pastor to pray for mental health sometime during the prayers of the church this month. I, I guarantee you there's at least one person sitting in those pews who's very much struggling and, and Lord have mercy on them. That's that's what we're here for. So um, this is uh, the Drive to School podcast, uh, being aware of mental health. Um, Ashley, thanks so much for being here with us today. Thank you.